Thank you, our Heavenly Father, for this day that you've given us, for this opportunity to gather in your house. Please, Father, help us to understand your words in these times. And please, God, help us to apply these times to our lives. Please, Lord, give us wisdom and guidance. Please, Lord, give us direction. Please, Lord, help us to be the hands and the feet to do your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Well, today, we're going to think about what we're thinking. As I've been thinking this week about everybody closed up, not getting out as much, and it's a good time for self-reflection. It's a good time to think about, you know, some of the stuff we didn't have time to think about when we're running headlong every day and doing away. But also within that, introspection is good, but a lot of people end up kind of lost in their thoughts in this kind of a time. And if you're thinking about negative stuff, you end up with nothing out there to counter it. You stop sitting around all day thinking about negative things. And that can cause a downward spiral, and you can have more cases of depression in a time like this than maybe other times. So as Christians, I think it's really important that we think about what we're thinking about every day. We need to be conscious. There are times like uh, some Eastern meditation stuff talks about emptying your minds and doing that to relax and things like that. The Christian doesn't need to do that. We don't need to have empty minds. We need to have minds focused on the Word of God so that He can feed us in those times when we're trying to relax and focus. So we're going to talk about that just a little bit today. Uh, we're going to start with 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 3 and 4 talk about how we fight things. We are uh, living in a time where there's this virus that we just don't know how to fight, we're just all hiding from. Well, fine, you know, hiding from it's a, a good thing, to a point, but there's also a fight still going on, and we don't need to be distracted from that. Now, in Secretary, we learned that in this fight, it says here that, for though we walk in the flesh, we're not waging war according to the flesh. We're obviously stuck in these bodies that we have, but we do not fight the fights that we fight from a fleshly, bodily way. We have a, a way to do things above that. We have things beyond what we can see and touch and feel and hear. There are things other than living through the next week or two that we need to be worried about. And it goes on to say, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. And there are many strongholds out there. There are strongholds of pride, strongholds of depression, and strongholds of addiction, and all kinds of them out there. Even strongholds of fear and worry and concern, and strongholds of wondering if you have enough supplies. But we have a God that's above all these things, that knows what our needs are. <coughs> When Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount that we don't need to be anxious for things, he meant we don't need to be anxious for things. Even in a time like this, we need to be agents of hope and people of love helping each other to get through a tough time. In 2 Corinthians 10, 5, Paul goes on to this. He says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive to obey Christ. So as we're thinking about what we're thinking about, this passage becomes really important. We need to take every thought captive to obey Christ. So when we're thinking about all these strongholds we might have around us, all the, the, the fears, the anxieties, whatever, even to helping our family members that have fears and anxieties, our thoughts need to be not just empty, but captive to Christ. So how do we do that? What, I, I want to give us some real world stuff here today. So just three things that I, I think would help to keep our thoughts captive. One would be memorizing scripture. You know, I've shared with you guys that I'm dyslexic. I have trouble memorizing things because I get numbers backwards. I get 
letters backwards sometimes. So scripture memorization for me, like chapter verse stuff, is really difficult. But I can remember what the word says. There are a lot of times I can remember what God has said in his word, but I have to go look up where it's at. And that's fine. But get in your heart what he has said. You know, the, the psalmist said in uh, Psalms 119, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. You know, and he didn't say that because he knew chapter and verse of the word. He knew the word. And that's what we need to know. We need to know what God says. We need to know things like God, Jesus says, don't be anxious. I know what you need. We need to know the word says to keep our thoughts captive. Not let them run loose and empty. But bring them in. So scripture memorization, prayer. Prayer is a great way to keep your thoughts captive. This could be a time when you have such an increased prayer life because you got a little bit of time on your hands. Maybe you can get some things done with God that you couldn't do before. Maybe you can spend more time reading the Word and just letting God help us sink deeper into your heart. Maybe this can be a time for that. Renewal and refreshing. Um, we can stay you know, six feet away from each other and whatever and take a walk in the woods. Hike out there and enjoy what God has around us. His creation is still there. Let this be a good spiritual time for you. Confess those things that you find your thoughts running to. If you find your thoughts running to fears that you shouldn't have, confess those. The thoughts you shouldn't have, confess those. The fact that we are identifying what we're thinking and laying that out before God is going to help us to correct what we're thinking. If we just roll through our day and we never stop to think much about it, then we end up in, I mean, sometimes in some very dark places we never intended to be. And we certainly aren't any help to anybody else then. But journaling is another good thing to do. I know not a lot of people do that. I don't journal like I ought to sometimes. But just if you went from a point of education, educators know that if somebody listens to a lecture about something, they retain a certain amount from that. If they listen to a lecture and they're also reading stuff on slides or reading stuff in a textbook in front of them, they're going to retain just a little bit more of that. We also know that if somebody hears it, sees it, and does it, then they get like the most retention out. And that doing can be just writing down. Writing down where God's done in your life today. Writing down where your thoughts were today and, and what you had to lay before God. So maybe tomorrow or the next day when you look back and you know, I'm worried about this, but I know I've laid that out to God already. I'm going to pray about it again and just be done. So keep a record of, of how your prayer life goes. Keep a record of what you learned in the Bible today. Maybe you don't write the whole scripture down, but you can do that too. But write down what God said to you while you're reading the scripture. A sentence or two. Because I, I know I forget stuff a lot. God shows me these incredible things, and I walk away, and I don't remember a bit of it sometimes. So write it down so you can have it later. To kind of bear that out, if we go to Ephesians, thinking about this reading scripture and meditating on it, praying and, and journaling. In Ephesians, in the 6th chapter, we, we see this, starting in verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God, Paul says, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Why? Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Our fight is never with each other. And I wish our government leaders could figure that out. Our fight doesn't need to be with each other. Our fight is a spiritual one. We seek after God and we follow after God and we love our neighbors. And we love the Lord. This is our job. This is what we should be doing. And all of our decision-making, problem-solving, everything else needs to come from that place. And then we end up with really good decisions. 
We end up with good policies. And we end up with you know, treating each other well. So we need to get off this idea that the fight is with that person in front of me, even though it really feels that way sometimes. Even if you want to argue that, that me, it's that person in front of me I need to fight with, it's the forces that are pushing them that we need to fight against. And we fight against those in a different way. He goes on and says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand firm. God commands us through all the stuff we deal with in life that we be able to stand firm. Stand firm with what the truth of his word says. Stand firm about what sin is and what sin is not. And stand firm about the love of God to all sinners. Stand firm internally when our own mind tells us we're not worth anything. But God says, I love you. Stand firm on his promise that he loves us. That he's forgiven us because of what Jesus has done. If, if he's forgiven. If you're a child of God, you're a child of God. If not, then it's a good time to sit down and think about becoming one. To ask Jesus to forgive you for your sin. To allow his righteousness to cover you. Uh, going on to that, it says, Stand therefore, having fastened the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So, you know, I don't know about you guys, I need a belt to keep my pants up. It's not a fashion accessory for me. Bad things happen if I don't wear my belt. And the breastplate, as far as armor goes, that would cover this whole midsection and and help to support and, and, and carry me, you know, keep me upright and in the right position. And we need the, the Word of God for that. We need that relationship with God for that. We need to be able to have the truth, the real truth that God shares through His Word, and the righteousness imputed to us from Jesus, allow that to support us as we go through our day. Allow that to give us meaning, to give us direction, to give us answers. So that we can stand firm. He goes on and says, And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. I don't know if a lot, a lot of people up here in the mountains might be different than me. I, I got tender feet. I, I, I don't even like walking around the house without shoes on. Some guy, because, wow. Well, and sometimes I come around, come from the house over to the church here, and I go across that gravel parking lot. Even with shoes on, man, those rocks hurt my feet sometimes. We need shoes to protect our feet. Because i got to tell you, if your feet are not protected, you're not going to stand up long. You're not going to make it far. And it says here that this protection for our feet is the gospel of peace. This is the foundation we move through in our life. This keeps us safe and above the rocks. This keeps us from falling. It's the gospel of peace, which is the gospel of Jesus. Not just peace as in a cessation of war, but peace as in a cessation of conflict between us and God. If you want peace with God, you need what Jesus gives. You need that forgiveness. And you might be thinking, well, you know, you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. And I, I don't know. I don't even know who's watching today. <laughs> you know, I don't know who this is ever going to get to. But I know that when Jesus died on the cross, he died for every sin of all of mankind for all of eternity. He died for all of it. It's the only way that the sacrifice was perfect. So, you know, I don't know where individual people have been, and I really don't need to. Jesus died for your sins, no matter who you are, no matter where you are. You need simply to call out to him and ask for forgiveness. The debt's been paid. That is some great news. Also, he goes on and says, In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, 
So in everything that we're doing, all circumstances, we need to bring our faith into that. In a world that says check your faith at the door, we need to say no and keep our faith in everything. Because with that, you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. This is our shield, our faith. This is our victory. There's a song there. If we had a song service, we could do faith as a victory today. It goes on here. He says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The helmet to a military man protects some of the most important stuff you got going. Your brain. Your head. One of your most vital things. Hey, your head and your heart is what's going to keep you going. And the breastplate of righteousness covers your heart. And the helmet of salvation covers your head. Interesting how both of those are directly tied to Jesus. <coughs> the righteousness, the only righteousness we can ever have is from him. Because we're nothing on our own. We don't bring any good to things. And he gives us salvation. That way we don't have anything to brag about. All the best of us are just forgiven sinners. But this is what we fight with, the sword. The only aggressive offensive weapon that we have in this armor of God is a sword. And that is his word. So that brings us back to, well, how do we initially find salvation? It's through prayer. How do we keep our mindset on our faith, our salvation, how do we use the Word of God effectively to combat the evil that's in this world and the evil that shows up in our brain? Brings us back to what we need to think about. We need to study and memorize and share the Word of God with people. I don't care if you share a chapter and verse. Share that God loves them and Jesus died for them and rose again. That's enough to keep them thinking. Share. Study, memorize, and share. We need to stay in prayer because as we talk to God in prayer and as we listen to God in that prayer time, He can put us in remembrance of what we need. We need to sturdy our lives so we can stand firm with reinforcement of these things through journaling, but through constantly repeating these. Daily repetition of Bible study and prayer, even writing things down as God brings it to mind. All of these things will help us to think about what we're thinking about every day. Hopefully lead us into some better thoughts and better ways to deal with our lives and help others as they deal with theirs. So I just want to give you a chance to, to pray today and just think about that a little bit. I don't know how... Uh, God might be leading you, your family, or anything else during this time. But it's very important that we pay attention to our thoughts, what we're doing, why we're doing it. And in the time when we're uh, tempted to look out for number one, we take time to watch out for others. It's what we should be doing as Christians. It's what I think our nation should be doing as a whole. Let's pray. Father God, I love you and I thank you for the opportunity to share your word today and for the chance to uh, just lift your word up to whoever would listen. God, I ask you to take that and, and to send it across wherever and to touch hearts and lives. That you may be glorified, you may be lifted up. And that through us seeking after you, we all get better through this. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.